So now that we discussed how to transform a straight chain carbohydrate into its ring counterpart, let's take a look at the following example. So the Haworth form of beta D glucopyranose describes the glucose ring as being a planar molecule. However, our molecule is not actually planar, but rather takes on the chair conformation. Describe how the chair conformation of beta D glucopyranose actually looks like, beginning with the Haworth form of beta D glucose. So this is our whole worth form it's basically the most common way to describe the three-dimensional structure of our glucose molecule or any other ring carbohydrate for that matter so we have our oxygen we have the first carbon second carbon third fourth fifth and sixth carbon this is our primary alcohol and notice that the primary alcohol is on the same side as this hydroxide group attached to carbon number one and that's why we give it the name beta so this is the beta anomer compared to the alpha anomer on which this hydroxide is pointing downward in the opposite direction of the primary alcohol so in nature the actual diagram that describes the beta d glucopyranose doesn't actually look like this because this describes a planar molecule on which these six atoms one oxygen and five carbons basically lie along the same plane so to transform this planar molecule into its chair conformation we basically have to flip our molecule so to flip our molecule we basically take this carbon number one and we pluck it downward we pull down while we take this carbon number four and we pull it up so let's label carbon number one so this is our carbon number one this is carbon number two three and four so we take carbon number one and carbon number four we pull carbon number one down we pull carbon number four up and when we pull this we basically transform our molecule into its chair conformation so let's create our chair conformation which basically looks something like this so we basically have our oxygen which is right over here we pull this downward so this will basically point downward we pull this up so this one will point upward and then we connect with these bonds here so we have these bonds here so this is our oxygen next is in line is our carbon number one carbon number two carbon number three and carbon number or carbon three and carbon number four so when we pull this one downward because this basically points upward this will point along the equatorial position so when we pluck it downward it will orient itself along this direction where our h in this case will basically point downward because the h will move down when we pluck this down now what about this one well in this case if we pluck this one downward this one will basically go upward and so our hydroxide will point also along our equatorial position so this OH will point along the equatorial while the H will point upward because here the H also points upward. Now this one is plugged downward, this one goes up, this one goes downward. So if this one goes downward, this is this carbon here. Initially this was pointing up, so here it will point along the equatorial position while our H will point downward because it also pointed downward. Now what about carbon number four? Well carbon, carbon number four basically moves upward. So it's plucked upward because this one is plugged downward. So we pluck it this way. And so our H in this case points up, so the H here will also point upward. So the H here basically points like so, while our OH points along the equatorial. And finally, carbon number five contains this molecule, our 
primary alcohol that points up. So this one moves downward. So if this one is pointing upward here, it could either point equatorially this way or it could point downward because this one points upward. Our molecule will point along the equatorial position. So notice that each one of our larger groups, the hydroxide, the hydroxide, 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 and primary alcohol, all point along the equatorial position. And so this will be the more stable chair conformation. So this is our more stable chair conformation. Now we actually have another chair conformation that will be the less stable one. And let's draw that just so we know what the other one will look like. So our equilibrium arrow points to this one because this is the more stable. All the large hydroxide groups and the primary alcohol all point along the more stable location, the more stable position, our equatorial position. So basically to flip this one we take these two and we invert it so we pull this one up we pull this carbon downward and all these will basically change orientation so all our hydroxide that point along the equatorial will now point along the axile and all the atoms point along the axile will now point along our equatorial so when we pluck it it looks something like this so we have our oxygen will now be here so we have our molecule that looks something like this so basically now all the H's will lie along our equatorial position so this will be our sorry this um, let's see so let's start here we have our uh, in this case we have our OH so this is our carbon here so we have carbon number one, carbon number two, three, this is four, and so this is the fifth one. The fifth one will contain this primary alcohol, and so since here it points along the equatorial, now it will point along our axile. So it will point like so, while our H basically points along our equatorial. On the fourth carbon, this carbon here, the OH points along the equatorial, but now it's going to point along the axile, while our H will point along the equatorial. Now the third carbon here, the OH, points along the equatorial, but now it will point along our axile. So, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, axile. So that means it will point up, so our OH points up, while our other molecule, the H, points equatorially. Now on the second carbon, we have the OH point equatorially, but now it will point along the axile, while the other one will point along the equatorial. And finally, carbon number one, this points equatorially, so now it will point axially, while this one, exile, while this one will point equatorial. So notice now the larger groups all lie along the axile position, and so this will be the less stable chair conformation. So this is how we basically transform the Haworth form of beta D glucopyranase or any other glucose or any other carbohydrate molecule for that matter into the two types of chair conformation. This is actually how the molecule looks in nature because here we don't have a planar form, we have the correct chair conformation.